loves, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a fun Q&A as well as another get ready with me because you guys love my get ready with me videos and you also asked me to answer a bunch of questions for you guys and you sent me in the juiciest, most fun one. A lot about prison visit, believe it or not. So if you're interested in a Q&A, please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Wives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. I'll pop the link up there. We don't glorify or glamorize prison or prison wife life here, but I will teach you how to make the best out of this one shot deal. I've been doing it for a really long time and I have so many people who tell me they would not be able to face their journey or get through it without me, which is so humbling. If you could do me a favor and give me a thumbs up, I would so appreciate it. It helps me so much in YouTube. And also if you're new here or you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to be notified every single time. I post a video every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we are doing a few more lives here and there on the days in between. Okay, let's get started with this look. I already filmed this video once last week. It wasn't a QA, and a It was my For Life review for episode five, I think. And for some reason, my SD card decided it didn't want to save the videos. <laughs> I filmed like six videos that day. So I don't know what the heck is wrong with my camera, but I have a brand new SD card and let's hope that nothing happens to this one. So I don't know if anybody else is having the same issue, but whew, the quarantine eating is out of control. And then that means the quarantine breakout has been ridiculous because all I've been eating is chocolate. I don't break out very much anymore in my, you know, past my prime years, but I don't know. Decided to have some cystic breakout going on right now. Anyway, so what I did was I asked you guys questions over on Instagram and Facebook. I forgot to do it on the communities tab on YouTube, so we'll do that next time. But we can just talk through it. I'll answer the questions for you guys and we'll have a little fun Q&A. If you like this and you wanna do more Q&As in the future, just let me know. It would be nice if I was filming this without food in my teeth. Okay, so the first question you guys asked was what was my most embarrassing visit story? That's a good one. So I'm sure there were a few, but the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me at visit was, well, the most embarrassing thing that's happening to me right now is this mask. Can you see it? Wow. Get your life together, girl. But the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me at prison visit was I am 5'3 and Adam is 6'4. So there is a huge height difference between us. And when I wear flats, I look, and you see this from behind, I look like his daughter, pretty much. So a lot of times I'll wear heels. Plus, I mean, let's be real, I'm a Jersey girl. I love, love, love my high heels. And this one day I thought I looked adorable. I was wearing the cutest outfit, these hot pink jeans, back when all different color jeans were hot, a white, baby doll kind of lace tee and then a black blazer over it. And I had these badass pumps that were black and the toe, the tip of the toe was white. There's a prison quirk that happens to some people. And the longer you've been in, the worse this quirk can be. That's where guys get obsessed with waxing their floors. Adam told me he actually had to have words with one of his cellmates not too long ago because the guy wouldn't clean. He wouldn't remove everything from the cell. He would just literally strip and wax the floor over and over and over again, but he wouldn't clean. So he's like, you have to clean in between. If you take everything out of the cell, you have to make this a day long job. You can't just keep stripping and waxing the floor around everything because that's gross. So whoever was cleaning the visit room, because I don't know if you guys know this, but Inmates do everything in prison. They are the maintenance people, they're the laundry people, they run the prisons. The staff just kind of supervises them doing their jobs. So they also clean the visit room. And a lot of people take pride in their jobs in prison because it's all they have to do. So they're gonna do it to the best of their ability. And plus anything that deals with their loved ones, they wanna do to the best of their ability anyway because the only thing they have to show pride in for us. So whoever was taking care of the visit room for a few months in a row was over waxing the floor. And it looked beautiful, but it was so slippery. There were so many times that I almost fell. So this one day I'm wearing my badass pumps, the black pumps with the white tip toes. And I went up to go 
to get Adam food out of the vending machine. Now, the way that it was set up was all the chairs on one side would face the middle, all the chairs on the other side would face the middle. There was a line, like a walkway in between, and then the perimeter of the room was a walkway, and all of the vending machines were on one side of the room. I was on the exact opposite side of the room. So I'm walking up to go get the, some food out of the vending machines. Adam wasn't out yet, out of the back yet. He was still, he was waiting to be called. And I'm walking and I'm just about at that middle aisle and my heel slips on this really overwaxed floor. I go sliding across that middle row and my hand landed on a chair. There was a family sitting across that row. I'm sliding towards them. I hit the chair, my hands on the chair, and I'm face to face falling, but I didn't, I stopped myself right before I fell on this little boy's lap. And I just got so embarrassed. And I remember I looked at the mother and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Cause here I am like practically making out with her son <laughs> falling on top of him. And I was like, I'm so, so, so sorry. And she was like, are you okay? Are you, are, are, are you sure you're okay? And I was like, no, 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 I'm fine. My ego's bruised, but I'm totally fine. But I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. I didn't mean to scare him. So that's probably the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me at visit to me personally. I saw something really embarrassing happen to this older woman who had an accident in her pants and I felt bad for her, not only because she had an accident at visit, that's awful, but also because people were laughing. So that was terrible, but things happen. The next question is, what's the worst thing that's happened to you while you were away at visit? Oh, okay, so I have two. The first thing is my grandfather passed away while I was away at visit, but he, I got the phone call on the Sunday I was driving back. So I didn't have to leave visit early or anything. My grandfather though, I, this, I don't know if this is going to come across sounding wrong, but I think you guys could probably understand and relate. He was the only person in my whole entire life where I was actually relieved when I found out that he passed away. And that's because the last time I saw him, he was so sick. He was suffering so badly and it was breaking my heart. I remember the last time I ever saw him praying to God to please just spare him from the rest of the suffering and take him because it was at that point where if he held on, it would just be for his family and not for him anymore. He wasn't living. So he had dementia and he was in a home, but he must've had a stroke at the very end because he lost control of his body and everything would kind of shake. But then also this hand was just, he had no control over it. It would like flail all over the place and he would mumble and the nurse would feed him and it would just drip all over. And he would just kind of like cry out in pain. It was so sad. So, so sad. So that was the first worst thing because still, I mean, it's sad when you lose somebody regardless, but it was almost a relief like a, it's a weird catch 22 feeling. The other horrible thing that happened to me when I was away at visit was my dog died. So I found that out on a Saturday. I was still staying for a visit on Sunday and I just kind of hung out in the hotel room. My friend Annie was on the phone with me for a while cause she's a huge dog lover. And we just kind of chit chatted about it. And Visit the next day was okay. It was kind of, I was just kind of out of it a little bit. Like I was sad. He was my dog. He was my dog. He wasn't even my family's dog. He became my family's dog, but he was my dog when I left for college. And then I brought him home to my family when I moved home after college. But thankfully nothing overly tragic or anything like that. Thank God. The next question is, what's the scariest thing that happened while Adam was inside? The scariest thing for me, thank God, isn't too, too bad. But one time when he ended up in the hole because it was like weird timing. He hadn't been at the, in the hole for many years, probably over a decade, not since I was back in touch with him. And I remember that it was a very strange kind of timing. I told the whole entire story on a video that I'll post up there. I hear from Adam, thank God, almost every single day. So I didn't hear from him and it had been probably close to two days, but I didn't think really twice about it because I was distracted. My mom, this is when she was just re-diagnosed with cancer and we didn't know yet. We were waiting for testing to come back. So I had no idea. Like I just, it was just the furthest thing from my mind. And I remember it was a Wednesday and all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, when's the last time I heard from Adam? So I reached out to one of my friends whose husband was where Adam is and she reached out to her boyfriend. And I remember she kind of fell into the inmate.com rumor mill of it. 
And when she called me back after she found out, she was like, oh my God, he got in a fight and everybody's talking about how the lifer got the shit beat out of him. And I was like, I stopped and I started to feel myself getting angry. And I was like, well, that lifer's my husband. You need to tell me, is he okay? Was he standing up? Were all of his teeth in his mouth? Like, was he able to stand up? Did he have broken ribs? Was, did he have internal bleeding? How bad? I, I, what happened? Do I need to go up there? And this was March and I typically don't go to visit over the winter because the weather there is really bad. It's in the mountains and it snows just about every day there. So another friend had reached out to me and kind of gave me the scoop and was really great about it. He was filling me in every day about what happened. And if you guys want to know what happened, just watch the video that I linked above. But that was the scariest thing that happened just because I didn't know what happened. And you guys who have had a loved one go to the hole can relate. The next question is, what's the first thing you think about when I say criminal justice reform? You guys have really good questions. So I don't know if anyone's gonna take this the wrong way, but the first thing that comes to my mind when somebody says criminal justice reform is Kim Kardashian right now, because she's kind of taken the forefront of criminal justice reform. And I know people have a lot to say about that. Not liking that, thinking that self-serving, this and that. I say, why are we hating on somebody that's using their celebrity for something positive? Something so good. Finally, we have people hopping on board of criminal justice reform. Let the girl do it. Thank you, Kim. And one of my friends made this comment on our Strong Prison Wives and Families Facebook page. She said, it's really not that far-fetched of an idea that Kim would get involved in criminal justice reform. Her father was a really, really good defense attorney. So it kind of is like almost logical. So I hate that people are hating on it. And I don't know if I'm gonna get hate for saying that, but if you ask me to correlate, the first thing that comes to the top of my mind, when you say criminal justice reform, it's Kim Kardashian, and I can't thank her enough for everything that she's done for all of our families, what she did for Alice Marie Johnson, and everything with that. Number six, what's your favorite show or what are your favorite shows? Okay, I'll tell you all the shows I watch. So the, my first favorite show is This Is Us. Love, love, love This Is Us. I've been a huge fan ever since season one. My other favorite shows are The Handmaid's Tale. My mom got me into that show. I hated that show when I first watched it. Literally, I hated it. I did not wanna watch past the first episode. It reminds me so much of the cult that I used to be in when I was little, that it kind of is like scarred. In fact, when my sister and her husband first watched it, her husband was so scared. Like he's like, call Row and make sure this isn't what she had to deal with when she was younger. Because my youngest two sisters are so much younger than me. My parents were basically out of the cult by the time that they were growing up. So thank God they weren't exposed to it like me and my older siblings were, but I thought that was so cute that my brother-in-law was so concerned for me. However, my mother, was really into that show. She loved that show. Oops. And so we kept watching it together and then I got sucked in. That show sucks you in. It's really good. So Handmaid's Tale and then I also loved, well loved, it's over now, but Spy Games because our girl Christina Randall was in there and she did a fantastic job. In fact, after the first episode, I emailed Adam and I was like, I think Christina can take this whole thing. And I think she's playing smarter than any other competitor out there because of the fact that she did a time in prison. She wasn't trusting of anybody. Like everybody was kind of giving away their own secrets and trusting each other too quickly. And she was so calculated in every move. She made people trust her and she made them think that she trusts them, but I don't think she did it all. And like I said, every single move was calculated and you could see that she thought through every move like a chess game where the other people didn't do that. So huge, huge fan of that show, even though it's over, if you're interested in watching it, I know it's all over YouTube because I missed one episode one night and I was so upset. I missed one episode because of YouTube because I couldn't get a video to upload right and I needed one for the next day. And I watched it on YouTube the next day, so I know for a fact you can. And then the other show that I'm really into right now, obviously, because I do reviews on it, is For Life. There's a theme in my life, clearly. Because honestly, I will support anything criminal justice related and I think that show is fantastic. And I don't know what's going to post first, this or my latest review, but I still owe you guys episode four and five. I just, like I was telling you before, my camera has been jacked up and for some reason didn't save episode five. Do I owe you four and five or five and six? I think five and six. Whatever. Okay. Next question. What perfume do you wear to visit? <laughs> 
are so cute. I wear all different kinds of perfumes, but my number one favorite that I typically always wear to visit is Chanel Chance, and it's the purple one. Chance has a few different ones. I don't know if it has a specific name to it. It's purplish pink, but it's more purple than pink. I also used to wear, because remember, Adam and I have been together so long, I used to wear Aqua de Joya when that was really, really, really popular. That's the first perfume that I ever wore when... I was going to visit Adam like the first year of us getting back together was all Aqua de Joya. And then that kind of, like I still love it. I still have a bottle of it. It smells really clean. I love clean scents, but I think it's just like, it smells dated on me at this point. It's probably just cause I've worn it so much, but I moved over to Chanel Chance, the purple, and I love, love, love it. Every once in a while also in the spring and summer, I will wear DKNY, Donna Karen, Be Delicious. It's called Be Delicious. And I like the green apple one. Mm, smells so good. That's getting a little dated on me too though. So if anybody has any scent suggestions, let me know. But Chanel Chance is my holy grail, the purple. Where and when can we hang out? Oh, I just wanna hug you, but I, I, I socially distant hug. Okay, so we can hang out in October in Dallas at the Prisoner Family Conference. In fact, I literally just got my tickets, my plane tickets, like two days ago, because tickets are dirt cheap right now. So I paid probably $150 less than I've paid in the years past for my tickets and I have to get insurance, but I hope and pray that that is still on, depending on what's going on right now with everything going on in the world. But the Prisoner Family Conference, all of the information is at prisonerfamilyconference.org on the website, all about lodging and accommodations. And I will be there. Hopefully by then we could all give each other big hugs and hang out and have a blast. So yay! It's also our Strong Prison Wives and Families Meetup. So it's a conference. You know what I love about that conference too is that I love that you just feel normal there. Like I remember the first year, one of the girls had her phone on the table and it was about seven of us prison wives at dinner. And I could see her phone was ringing and you could tell she was like, oh, I don't wanna answer it. It's her, it was her husband. And we finally were like, is that your husband? And she said, yeah. She's like, I don't wanna be rude. And we're like, girl, answer it. So it's the only place where you feel 100% normal and accepted and it's just so beautiful. Normally, let me just interrupt myself. Normally I wear lashes, but it is six o'clock on Friday night. I'm just doing this to film this video and one more video. So I'm just gonna put on mascara. Hopefully this isn't dried out. So if you can go and you have the means to go, do it. Last question, what is your favorite outfit you ever wore to visit? You guys are so cute, I love these questions. So back when I first started visiting Adam, when we first got back in touch, Kim Kardashian was mostly known for her blog. She had this blog where she put outfits of the day every single day. And this is kind of a tip to you guys. Kim and I are built very similar. We're both petite and curvy. So if you need outfit inspiration, if you don't, you know, you don't really like to put your outfits together by yourself, or you feel like you're not really gifted in that area, I can put a good outfit together, but I also like inspiration. We all do. So I used to rely on Kim's blog for inspiration because we're built very similar. Like I remember I went through a preppy phase at one point. I know Jersey girl with curves not a good look for me. But I followed Jenna from, Jenna from J. Crew. What's her last name? Shoot, what's her last name? Hold please. Famous Jenna that works for J. Crew. I'm gonna find her. According to Business Insider, Mike Coppola, Getty Images, Jenna Lyons is leaving J. Crew after more than Oh, she's leaving, but Jenna Lyons. I used to follow her blog. I loved her outfits. They were so cute, but she's a stick and she's literally over six feet tall. I'm 5'3". So her outfits are gonna look adorable and cute on her and they're gonna look frumpy on me. She did a lot of boyfriend jeans. She did a lot of cropped pants. Don't work on me. There's just a life lesson for you guys. Follow fashion bloggers that are kind of built similar to you for inspiration. Okay, so anyway, I followed Kim Kardashian's blog and she had this outfit that I loved and I recreated obviously a look for less and it was these white jeans. Mine were Levi's, they were patchwork jeans and a white t-shirt. I think mine was from Zara and it was burnout. And I'll never forget, it was back when wearing a colored bra with a white see-through t-shirt so your bra showed through was really in style. So I wore a black bra with a white burnout tee to prison visit. It's like, well, 
I'll try and see if they let me in. And if they do, cool. If they don't, I had backups in the car like I always do. And I actually was able to get away with it. I wore a white t-shirt, a black bra, and a black blazer with these, so funny now, but with these really pretty quilted heels. I remember I was shopping with my sister-in-law and we went to Baker's. Is Baker's shoes even a thing anymore? I loved their shoes. Got these shoes for $11 on the clearance rack and my sister-in-law was like, if you don't get them, I will. They were gorgeous, I wore the crap out of them. But this was so long ago, they were a quilted round toe platform stiletto. They were tan with like this black piping around them. Oh, I love those shoes, I wore them all the time. I wore my hair in a ballerina bun, very similar to the way Kourtney Kardashian made very popular back then. And I had elastic bands around my hair. They were all black and I had maybe had like six of them. And I remember halfway through the visit, it's so funny the things that we remember from visits, like so vividly, but about halfway through the visit, my head started hurting. I started to get a headache because these bands were too tight. So I took them off and I put them around my wrist. So it looked like I had a whole bunch of bracelets on and it actually looked really, really cute. So again, I'll pop the picture in there, but that's my favorite outfit that I ever wore to visit. I'll just put this little bit of pink on. Just have something on my lips because I forgot to bring any lipstick downstairs. Okay, that was so, so, so much fun. So if you wanna do another Q&A, let me know in the comments below. I love that you guys asked so many visit questions. That was so cute. You guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to all of yours. I will see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. And here is... Bye.